All right, uh, we're going to get started on the office hours. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, the usual, the updates, as well as talking about uh, AKS on premises. Um, for those of you new to this, this is the AKS public office hours, as you know by now, because it's uh, we're sharing this on the screen. Uh, this is uh, run by uh, myself, uh, Alice Gibbons, and Dave Strabel. Uh, we are members on the cloud native, or we're transitioning to now the digital app innovation Google Black Belt team. New year, new title. Um, but uh, essentially, we cover a plethora of things, including Kubernetes. Um, yeah, so um, again, uh, Dave Strabel, Alice uh, have been running this for a long time, as well as uh, Kendall, uh, Kendall Roden, who's now moved on to the Azure Container Apps uh, uh, PG team, uh, the product team. Um, we've been doing this for quite some time now, I think like two plus years uh, right now. Uh, Dave is, of course, uh, we'd like to plug his book uh, in uh, an author uh, with Kubernetes best practices. Uh, Alice uh, has been working in Kubernetes land for a um, number of years, uh, as have I. Uh, Alice and myself are on the Canadian side of the team. We don't, there are no borders, really, but we like to call that out in general. Um, if you've got any questions, please reach out to us uh, on you know, Twitter for Dave or uh, GitHub for Alice and myself or however, uh, whatever means you may be able to find us on LinkedIn, et cetera. Uh, so why do we do the office hours? Uh, first off, uh, if this is your first time joining or you don't know how you got the link to this or you'd like to share information about the office hours themselves, um, please check out our GitHub page, which uh, includes all the information, previous recordings, presentations, what's coming up next, et cetera. Uh, so github.com slash Azure slash AKS dash GBB dash office hours. Uh, we run these office hours to provide uh, you, you all, both internal and external customers, with uh, updates pertaining to AKS uh, and the cloud native ecosystem uh, at large. Uh, so we usually kick off and kind of do that um, update uh, for for everyone. Uh, we also uh, talk and demo usually uh, cloud native technology. So this could be uh, external things like uh, Calico. We've had Calico team or Tigera team come in for in the past. We've had a product group come in from networking security to show us some cool new uh, new stuff. And as this all happens today, we'll have Sarah on uh, today as well to talk about AKS on-prem. Uh, we also like to collect feedback from our customers. So any issues you may be having today, any blockers, any particular, I wouldn't say odd, but like, you know, extreme use cases you may have for, for AKS. We have some, you know, low latency requests, multi-region, uh, you know, routing stuff that we do with customers. Uh, so please feel free to bring it to these calls. Um, again, if you know any friends or any colleagues who would like to join the office hours, uh, use the uh, GitHub link there to find the actual uh, calendar invite, uh, as well as the uh, live link to, uh, uh, to to open up Teams, the Teams call itself. So what to expect? Uh, our agenda typically takes a format of five to ten minute intro, including this. Um, uh, followed by, again, the ecosystem update for both AKS and Kubernetes at large. Um, and then it's usually a 20 to 30 minute demo of a particular you know, product or tool within the space itself. Um, and then at the end, of course, we, we like to try to have you know, questions throughout. Um, but at the end, we've, we've dedicated 10 to about 20 minutes uh, to, for feedback and discussion. Uh, if we don't have any, that's, that's all right. We'll just give you some time back. Um, uh, but if we do, we, we keep going. Um, uh, do note that you can reach us, of course, uh, after the call uh, if you need to. Uh, keep in mind, again, we do want to keep it a two-way conversation, so feel free to come off mute if you have a question during presentation, but uh, try uh, to keep your, your mic muted during the presentation because it caused feedback, and you know, we've had people had phone calls during, during the actual uh, uh, meeting itself, so it can get, get kind of distracting. Um, this call is going to evolve, so we are debating in terms of what the format should take uh, going forward. Uh, just for transparency, you know, we work on a fiscal year uh, starting in July, so that's sort of the time where we may may hand off or may reformat or you know restructure some things. So just keep that in, uh, keep that in mind that around the July time point that that may uh, change an update. And we want your feedback in terms of what you do or don't like, or we want us to stop doing or continue doing uh, as part of this format. Um, and again, I'd like to call us out again. Because um, it, it can be you know uh, strange to remember where you got the invite from or how do we actually get information. Everything that we we have about these meetings is posted to GitHub. Again, github.com slash Azure slash AKS GBB office hours. So it's it's all there uh, ready and waiting for you. Right. So I want to jump into the AKS updates. 
the thing that you may want to know about AKS updates, if you uh, are a first time uh, watcher or you're watching this on YouTube and not sure where to go, AKS, the AKS team, the product team, uh, does a great job in terms of letting us know what is on the roadmap uh, to be deployed, uh, as well as the uh, pertinent information in terms of releases. So when I go through releases, the information I get will be the public stuff that is on, on our public GitHub page. You can reach that at uh, github.com forward slash Azure forward slash AKS forward slash project slash one for all the project like roadmap details uh, of what's going to come out to uh, come out or eventually on our uh, backlog of things to put into AKS. And then the releases page, uh, as you can see there in the link, will show you what is has actually been released uh, at a certain point in time. So today I'll be covering releases for May 22nd. Uh, so that was last week, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember. Uh, what time and year it is uh, being in my basement and such. Um, so AKS updates, so 522 updates. Um, not much in terms of announcements have changed since our last call, but I'll run through them anyways. If you are running Windows node pools, uh, Docker support will in fact be deprecated uh, in 124. So uh, on Linux nodes today, we've already moved away from Docker or Mobi or the Mobi shim or Docker shim or what, whatever you might want to uh, refer to it as, goes by many names, but essentially moving away from Docker. Uh, we've moved to container D on Linux, and we're doing the exact same thing on our Windows nodes today. So um, before you migrate, uh, if you're on like a previous version from 124, uh, so 1 in 24 and lower, uh, please do test that your workloads do run on a cluster running container D on 124 plus, um, just to make sure your app doesn't break, of course, right? Uh, do your due diligence there. Um, also starting from 124 onward, uh, cube login binary. So that's this is very specific to how uh, um, AKS works with Azure um, in, in, in connection to if your cluster is connected to Azure Active Directory for login and authentication, right? So the cube login is a binary that we, we've uh, made available. Um, this is required and it needs to be on your command line path in order for you to get your uh, AKS credentials. So your, your cube config credentials essentially into, into your system. Uh, the reason being is because there are certain things to change the format token into the appropriate Kubernetes format, and so cube login is required to do that on your behalf. Uh, this is essential. Uh, this is especially uh, significant for uh, non-interactive logins as well. So do keep that in mind that you do need it, and it should be installed in your system. Uh, the connectivity rollout. So as you may or may not know, we had um, a previous uh, mode of connecting to the control plane, the AKS control plane. So that's the Kubernetes control plane that we manage on your behalf behind the scenes. Uh, we had used a previous version, uh, which was uh, using different ports, uh, UD, UDP, uh, I forget what the UDP port, but the TCP port, port 9000 as well. We switched to a model now that only requires port 443 that uses what we call connectivity. Uh, this uh, rollout should be completed as of today. Um, uh, Alice, my team member had mentioned that uh, in a side chat, but uh, do check to see that uh, that is there. Um, isn't a big deal other than the fact that you can now uh, reduce the the sort of exposed ports that you have in terms of external communication to the control plane. Uh, if you run it through a firewall or you know if you've got Azure uh, network security groups or NSGs involved, um, you can now reduce that to just port 443 and to the specific uh, Azure endpoint there. Okay. Uh, otherwise, the the cluster works the same way. There's nothing. It's kind of transparent to you in that sense. You wouldn't even know that connectivity is there otherwise, right? Um, the last one in terms of announcements, and I'll get to the the, the uh, other updates in a sec. Uh, if you are using AKS labels um, today, and let me actually switch to my um, browser. So uh, as of uh, 124, there are specific uh, label deprecations uh, in AKS. Okay, and that you should take a look at this, which ones are being deprecated and find the appropriate substitution for them in your cluster. So update the labels for certain like nodes, for example, within your cluster. And those would be found uh, here. Uh, again, if we if you actually go to, um, I, mean, I keep switching back and forth, apologize for that. But if you go to the releases page itself, each of the announcements will have a link. Um, I don't know if it comes across very clearly or if you can see the blue. But as you notice, you know, uh, cube login is highlighted in blue and at the very bottom here, use labels in AKS cluster documentation. That link is highlighted in blue. Uh, if you click on that, that should take you to this document here. Specifically, um, it should 
If it doesn't, then you can scroll down to the deprecated labels section, which will tell you the label which is deprecated. So in this particular case, failure domain dot beta dot Kubernetes dot IO slash region should be substituted with topology dot Kubernetes dot IO slash region. Um, it, if you've created a new cluster, that should already be there. Uh, if you ha have that from a previous one that you're upgrading, that may or may not update, but please check and know that those will be uh, deprecated or are currently uh, deprecated and that you should transition to these new ones in that middle column there. Um, the last column, just to be clear on it, uh, tells you who's actually forcing that deprecation in 124, right? Uh, some of these, as you can see in the top, uh, was that five of them? That's Kubernetes upstream. That's a Kubernetes uh, change that they've done uh, with the API or the labels there. And then the bottom ones are specifically related to Azure itself. And you can tell by the recommended substitution in terms of that naming structure, right? Kubernetes.azure.com and then role equals agent, et cetera. Uh, that would be an example of an Azure one. All right. Um, release notes update. So I see a hand up for question. Um, Ray, uh, Nolan, Nolan Reisbeck. Yep. Hey, Ray. Um, hey. I just had a quick question about the kube login change. So um, in some high security environments where egress is not allowed to the public internet, um, kube login is hosted on github.com. Does Microsoft have plans to make kube login available on a Microsoft domain if we're going to be enforcing that kube login requirement for 1.24 and beyond? Yeah, uh, I think the path today, uh, I forget what Azure version or Azure CLI version today that it included, uh, it should be packaged with the CLI itself. Uh, a lot, it's, it should be a sub command with AZ AKS. I think it's like install kube login or it's already packaged with it. Um, okay, so if you're using we'll the latest grace, it should be there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, all right, uh, release notes. So again, this is under uh, releases in our GitHub repo uh, for AKS itself. Um, there are a couple of big preview features I, I think uh, are pretty cool, and I'm, I'll probably spend most of my time on that. Uh, the bug fixes and components important too, but you know, for time uh, and brevity, I'll just stick to um, the release note, uh, so the preview features part of it. So uh, ARM64, the um, what was it Alton ARM architecture. So there are new uh, Azure VMs that use uh, ARM64 uh, CPUs. Uh, it'll this helps to reduce costs, and you know they're technically more performant in some cases uh, there. But those agent pools are now available for your Kubernetes cluster, and you can mix and match, right? You can have Windows node pools, you can have Linux, and you can have now ARM64 based uh, Linux. Um, uh, node pools uh, in your environment. So real cool. You can, you can check that out uh, in preview. There is a sign up. Again, if you go to the release notes section of our GitHub page, there's a link for you to go see that blog post or the PR you know, release news notification. There's also a link in there to sign up for that preview as well. It is public preview, but we are whitelisting um, certain or allow listing certain subscriptions to uh, get onto that. Azure Disk CSI Driver V2. So the cool portion of this, it's now in private preview. Again, you have to sign up for it. The biggest thing about this is that one um, in V2, you have the ability to tweak or fine tune some performance uh, uh, capabilities of the driver itself, as well as it now has an improved ability for, I think we call them replica mounts uh, inside Kubernetes. So it works, it's tightly coupled with the Kubernetes API itself. It helps to check uh, or be able to help you deploy multiple attached disks on different nodes. So if your stateful workload on you know, node one with that disk is attached, if that gets killed, it needs to be rescheduled, rescheduled on node two with a replic replicated disk of the exact same you know, state. Uh, it will, it can schedule onto that node and that helps to reduce the time to spin up an additional disk with that data backed up to it. Uh, a cool feature. Uh, I still, you know, for general practices and for those who are uh, listening on the call, um, try to do your, you know, stateful workloads outside of the cluster, but for, you know, a lot of cases that's not possible or you prefer it in cluster, this will help you get to a better um, stance, so to speak, in terms of uh, your stateful workloads. Um, there are additional extensions being added to uh, AKS as add-ons. So uh, draft, uh, CADA, and the web application routing add-ons are now preview in AKS. So these are additional flags that you can kind of check off when you're uh, running the Azure uh, so AZ CLI command line. Uh, you can add draft as an extension, be able uh, for you to basically create um, like a, a boilerplate uh, Kubernetes manifest file, Docker file, uh, Helm chart, connectivity file uh, to create uh, for your application itself uh, and direct it to your Kubernetes cluster. 
Uh, Kata um, is now supported via this add-on. Uh, it allows you to install and run uh, Kata inside your cluster uh, with the extension itself. Um, so again, you can get some support with that going forward. The last one is the web application routing add-on. So this is an uh, ingress controller. Uh, it's engine X behind the scene. Uh, it will be uh, supported in that sense. It will have integration with the Kubernetes uh, DNS external DNS um, uh, API. So it allows you to not only deploy the application with this ingress controller into your cluster with one um, manifest file, it will also have the ability for you to connect to an external DNS provider. Azure DNS, an example, it could be uh, Cloudflare. It's it's all part of that Kubernetes uh, special interest group SIG for external DNS uh, of the providers that you can connect to. Uh, and then, you know, it'll update all the DNS records, the A name records, et cetera, for you for that to route to your AKS cluster all in one shot, right? So much more streamlined in that sense. Preview uh, for that. Um, the last one, and then I'll hand it over to our illustrious guest, um, is Windows Server 2022 host support is now in public preview. So there are performance enhancements as well as security enhancements from Windows Server 2019 that are now available in 2022. Uh, when you want to run your Windows container based workloads, uh, that is now in preview and you know we'll get to uh, a GA release of that sometime in the near future as a result. So um, those are the big feature preview feature updates uh, wanted to update you on. And uh, uh, of course there are bug fixes with um, uh, uh, bring your own CNI nodes. So one of the things you may or may not know is that uh, there is a an ability now for you to bring your own CNI. So if you want like flannel or you know a Tiger Enterprise, uh, etc., you can actually deploy your Kubernetes cluster with a, a no CNI flag. If I'm not mistaken, what that flag is, uh, and then you can install your your CNI after the fact. Um, uh, there, um, the component updates are just business as usual. So we just you know bump certain versions up to the latest and greatest. Uh, and it's all again there on our AKS releases uh, page on GitHub itself. Right. Um, I don't see any questions at the moment in the chat, but if you do have any during the presentation, feel free to drop it in or, you know, uh, send me or our team a message uh, after the fact uh, via whichever method you prefer. Right. So without further ado and without further ranting, uh, I'm going to uh, return to the shadows from whence I came and hand it off to Sarah. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks, Sarah. I'm going to yeah. now stop presenting. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Ray. One second. Let me get all of this up. Yeah, the handoff is, is always a sketchy thing. Like, do you have permissions? Do you, you know, is, is this going to work? And we have to restart teams sometimes. It's, it's a fun yeah. experience. No, it's all good. And I, I participate in our lovely Surface self-host program. So when my computer goes wrong, it goes really wrong. Cool. Awesome. Um, so first, hi, I'm Sarah Cooley. I am a program manager lead on the AKS on-prem team. So we have been running around talking to everyone who will listen to us about AKS on-premises. We've been spending a pile of time uh, making sure that we have a cloud consistent Kubernetes offering that works in a way that AKS users should feel familiar with and love. Um, yeah, so we're going to start with what AKS on-prem is, what the value prop is, and go into a little bit about directionally what we are focusing on uh, and why. I do have a pile of demos that I linked as uh, that I linked into this deck, which I can share, and also which I can pull up if, if you would like to see how some of this stuff works. Uh, but I wanted to make sure to start with a introduction of what the pro product is and who we are and um, open it up for a for a conversation as opposed to spending the entire time work going through a demo immediately. I can see chat. Please feel free to ask questions in chat. Weirdly, I can't type in chat, but that's OK. Um, I can answer questions real time. And if you raise your hand, I'll be sure to call on folks. So it's much more fun to have an interactive conversation. Um, please feel free to jump in and ask questions as they come up. So what is AKS on-premises? We wanted to provide a CNCF certified Kubernetes um, solution that makes sure that IT administrators have a simple experience. So I feel like we've all been in the situation at some point where you have 
a pile of containers that need to be run by someone. And you're like, great, I don't know exactly what to do with this right now, but it's something I'm going to need to host, at least for the IT admins in the room. So AKS on-prem gives, gives you a really simple, secure way of managing a pile of containers that need to run on Kubernetes with end-to-end -end support with very little ramp up and specific learning time necessary to get going. We also are making sure to provide a consistent developer experience. We've seen that most of the time when folks move an application from cloud to on-prem, the application actually changes significantly. Um, there are a lot of things that are available in the cloud and especially through Azure that aren't necessarily available in a semi-connected environment or on-prem. So while the application details and dependencies might change, we really wanted to make sure that the developer tool chain is like identical. We want to make sure that the management interfaces for containers are identical. The underlying infrastructure, Kubernetes versions, GitOps, like those like CI CD pipeline details, we want to make sure that they are uh, very similar and as close to identical as we can get them. That's what we've been focusing on. Walking through a little bit about why it's easy to look at that and be like, great, you have Kubernetes. Fantastic. Looking into some of the details that make AKS on-prem different from the both roll your own Kubernetes and our competitors. It's it's we talked about Kubernetes often like it's a solution, like you have every piece of the ecosystem that you need available to just run containers easily because Kubernetes. When in reality, and you know this as AKS users, there's actually a ton of decision making that goes into setting up Kubernetes in your own environment. They're like backup solutions, container registry to hook up, logging and monitoring to get right. You need a load balancer usually for workloads of significant size. Probably want a web, a web UE user interface or a dashboard or something that you can use to see what your health and interfaces look like. You probably need secret storage. It just pile of tooling and pile of decisions that need to be made. And then every single one of those is going to have an update burden with it. You know, so each of those projects that you decide that you're going to use to have a good end-to-end -end Kubernetes experience, those all then come with CVEs and come with upstream changes and potential compatibility and integration points. So most of the time, at least, I don't know where everyone in this room is. It would be super interesting to see a show of hands between um, a opinionated Kubernetes deployment, like something like Tanzu, like AKS, um, on-prem offerings like Rancher. It would be interesting to see how many folks are already using a pre-built pre Kubernetes solution versus rolling your own Kubernetes. But um, this is something that's super interesting to me. I find lots of folks uh, are already using something that's more of a bundled Kubernetes offering with all of this stuff attached because it just is much more complicated than um, folks would expect at first glance. So then we have kind of the Microsoft full stack solution. This is the end to end with AKS on HCI, on Azure Stack HCI. We have validated hardware ecosystems. And this is like diametrically the opposite side of the spectrum. So this is where you get single provider support with from Microsoft end to end. I'm actually really proud of this end-to-end -end solution because we do weekly integration testing with everything you get from ARC, everything you get from HCI. And we have made sure that you have a really oh, consistent, high quality experience spanning the entire on-prem stack for running a containerized workload in Kubernetes. We manage security at every single layer of that stack, and it's still CNCF Kubernetes, so you still have the flexibility of reaching out and using Harbor as your container registry or using um, Metal LB rather than our default load balancer. We use uh, HA proxy by default and Calico CNI by default, but all of that's configurable because it's Kubernetes. So I, I really love our end-to-end -end stack for being flexible, but also if you don't want to think about it, there is a default for everything that you need to have for an application to run well. In reality, where we're finding most people are, we're finding that the, the points where somebody is going through and they're updating everything from hardware through in changing infra from containers to VMs, like this, this journey is not something that happens um, all at once. 
So what we've been really focusing on on my team working on AKS on-prem is we've been focusing on making sure that folks can pick the layer of this on-prem infrastructure stack that makes sense for them. So we work on the AKS layer where we're making sure that there's an AKS consistent experience on top of a much wider ecosystem of hardware and infrastructure. So you can get that partial journey um, without having to go full Microsoft stack if you're not ready to be there yet or you have existing uh, infrastructure on-prem and you're not looking to change that. You can run AKS as a service on both Windows Server and on uh, Azure Stack HCI and we're working on other infrastructure options, but we'll get into that in a second. And the great thing about bringing in the, the AKS on-prem layer is it gives you it gives you Kubernetes consistency with AKS. So we use the same versions of Kubernetes. We um, have the same directional security roadmap. Of course, we can't use cloud as extensively given we, we live in a semi-connected environment, so there are differences, but our security North Star is, is lined up with AKSs. We have all of the integration with AAD and Azure RBAC, plus we do regular conformance testing and integration testing with ARC services and a lot of the Azure services that you can use for AKS and use in a Kubernetes environment. We and and you still get that integration testing across all of the components that we've chosen to compose that AKS layer. So we manage that that management cluster. We provide a lot of the control plane. You can just run a, a Kubernetes workload in target clusters. Works great. We also have Windows Container support, which is um, not entirely unique to us, but it's something that we we've made sure works really really well with AKS on premises. Uh, so you can have mixed Windows and Linux work work or yeah sorry target clusters um, with auto scale and all of the all of the nice features that you would you would expect uh, yeah with Node pool scale up and paint support and max pods and controls we also support GPUs so you can use G T4 GPUs so yeah so it gets you a good a good middle ground where you have end-to-end -end support for your Kubernetes environment, still have that integration, still have some of those smart defaults, but without necessarily buying the entire Azure Stack HCI platform. Speaking of infrastructure, we actually have AKS on-prem running on a lot of different uh, Microsoft Edge, Edge operating system solutions, Edge solutions, there we go. So you have HCI and Windows Server, and those are generally available. We we announced both at Build last year that we were quieter about Windows Server. However, it's fully supported and has been since May of last year. Um, we have a AKS preview on Azure Stack Edge, on Azure Stack Hub, and Windows IoT. So those are our infrastructure options right now. We are always looking for feedback here because we want to make sure folks can use the platforms that they'd like. We heard a lot about VMware. We've heard a lot about bare metal. We've heard a lot about running on Mariner. If there are other infrastructure requirements that you have, um, I would love to hear from you. Come talk to us about your use case. What we've been finding is that there are a lot of folks who have Windows gravity coming from AKS. However, um, I love to be, I love to hear new things. I love to be wrong, so please come talk to me. So we do have so, a- So Sarah, uh, just sorry yeah. to interrupt there. Go ahead. Uh, should anyone want to reach out to you? What would be the best way to, uh, to reach oh, you? Oh, yes. Bird method. Absolutely. Um, you can reach out to me directly, but that's a little inefficient. Let me, I'll, I'll get a distribution list that's kind of our community, community group in just a second, but you can always email me directly if you'd like. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Yep, I spend a pile of time running around talking to people, so it's always a pleasure. Oh, excellent. We also have single node support. So one of the things that we've noticed is a lot of our competitors call out single node as being a different product. We're not doing that. We consider it part of our support statement. So I do just want to be super explicit that we do have single node support for Windows Server and Azure Stack HCI has single node in preview. We will make sure that that works um, and works really well. And now I'm excited to get into some of the stuff that's different. So just spent a pile of time talking about how this is real Kubernetes with some smart decision making to line up well with AKS. But this is the stuff that we're doing that's new and different. So one of the things that we are working on in conjunction with the ARC team, uh, we are busy working on deeper ARC integration. 
So we understand when we, we we've been talking to our customers. We understand that folks who are already using AKS, one of the things that's best about AKS is the ability to integrate with Azure Policy, AAD, especially AAD, like AAD RBAC. Time and again, I just hear from so many people that when AKS added AAD support for doing auth -Z and auth -N, so doing authentication and authorization for, for Kubernetes level RBAC at like the namespace and cluster level, that was a big deal for security because managing certs is terrible. Like going through and managing a pile of tokens and certs in a YAML file feels insecure. It's something that needs to be managed and rotated. And it's just a deeply aggravating thing that's hard to maintain, maintain and scale. So we wanted to make sure that we have that AAD consistency with AKS and that we can use Azure RBAC and that we can use Azure Policy. We have Defender for Kubernetes and a whole plethora of Azure tooling. We're taking that one step for, further and we're actually making sure that you can do full end-to-end -end life cycle management via ARC, as well as doing target cluster management via ARC. So you can use that same Azure RBAC policy experience for giving, for delegating permissions and for giving folks permissions to create target clusters on-premise using Azure. So you can be using ACCLI the way that you would with you know, our Azure Resource Manager, like just ARM templates and you know, use the patterns that you know and love from AKS and use those to manage your Kubernetes deployment on your physical hardware running in a customer site or on-prem wherever you need it to be. This is exciting to me for a couple of reasons. Obviously, the, the top one is just having that incredibly consistent AKS experience that brings a lot of that Azure value to the edge. And we already have our connected Kubernetes cluster, so we already have a lot of that day two. But being able to do cluster provisioning as well, brings it to a new level where if we have folks who are running lots of different on-prem deployments, say for retail or medical, we see that um, somewhat, somewhat frequently. If you have a lot of different deployments and you need to be able to manage them primarily centrally, but you can't afford downtime because it's your point of sale system, this makes it so you can have a much more managed experience through AZCLI with a centralized IT group managing a lot of remote endpoints in a way that uses that Azure based identity and consistency. So I'm super excited. Oh, of course, in doing that, we're making sure that our Azure CLI looks and feels a lot like what you're used to with AKS. It's never going to be identical because you are running on-prem. So my favorite example is we're using custom locations because talking about which Azure data center you're in makes no sense because it's your data center. So we are using custom locations for this rather than targeting a data center, for example. And also there's a little bit of weirdness around how we find your, your virtual network because this is going to be an on-prem virtual network that Azure isn't aware of. Um, don't know how to get around that yet. That might just be um, a, a little bit of a difference between the, the AZCLI experience when you're managing on-prem resources versus Azure. But at the same time, I'm super proud of the team and I'm super excited to see how folks start using this to manage on-prem things as if they were running natively in the cloud. So yeah, that's a little taste of the command line interface. This is in preview right now. So we actually started our private preview in November of 2019. We've added node pool support, AD integration, static IP, VLAN support, we are busy working on validating GitOps and OSM, so Open Service Mesh, making sure that a lot of those things that we see folks using are in this new platform in this preview. Uh, while this is so, to to be a little bit careful because I'm talking about adding a pile of things that exist in our GA product, um, we did have to do some fairly significant change in architectures to make lifecycle management and ARC work. Right now, lifecycle management in ARC is a standalone preview that lives next to the GA product. So it does, you can use AKS on HCI and Windows Server with a full set of support. Like Open Service Mesh has run for a very long time for um, AKS on premises. So has Azure Key Vault, secret storage drivers like AKB Works, Windows Defender, or De Defender for Kubernetes. Like all of that stuff works great in the GA product. And we're busy making sure that our preview for lifecycle management in Azure is um, at the same place before we integrate those two products. 
So if you want to join this preview, you can join the preview. It will it will run alongside uh, your standard AKS on-prem deployment uh, in parallel. So GitOps OSM, we're working on public policy and we're going to be releasing a public preview soon. So we are talking to special customers about our private preview. If you are interested in joining, um, let me know. Uh, yep. And I'm sharing a little bit about our roadmap. We do actually, same as AKS, have a roadmap in GitHub. So I have a link to that at the end of the deck. I will share the deck out if you want to look at it. Um, but we do have a roadmap in GitHub that you can go look at that has the same information. Currently, we have made GPU generally available as the end support if you're somebody using um, using SDN and HCI. Other scale support. This is actually an important point. I didn't talk about billing. We do consumption based billing, so we do make we we only bill for usage of actual workload clusters. So we do not bill for your control plane or your management cluster purely for target clusters, same as AKS. So I was really excited when we had auto scale support because it makes means that we do scale down to do more consumption based billing in a better way that's more fit to the actual workload size. So auto scale support was lovely to see. Um, reduce system requirements. We're making sure we run well on single. We've run well on single node. We're making sure we run well on single node, more commodity desktop hardware versus something that's more of a server centric hardware. General availability for Windows Server 22 containers is coming right up. We're working on that. It's so close. I can. I'm so excited. It's, it's like right there. Um, proxy support improvements. We are always working on improving our network interfaces and our firewall and security posture because we have a lot of folks running in a very in many disparate um, IT infrastructures. So that's that's important to us. We're also working on pre-downloading updates. We have found that folks who are running AKS on-prem often are running in places that have unreliable networking and the largest network burden for our product is when we download those VHDs because we are using Microsoft maintains um, a Mariner VHD so we have a secure Linux base image uh, that runs underneath all of our Linux nodes and we have a secure Windows base image that we publish the same one in AKS actually so we have that Windows base image that we also maintain. Downloading those two base images can be really tricky in some network environments. So we're busy making the product better for, for mixed network environments that may be super low, low quality by letting folks pre-download, set their own timeouts, things like that. So we're making the experience much better for folks in poor network environments. And of course, we're going to be keeping up with AKS's Kubernetes release schedule. So we're working on 1.23 support and we'll be updating to 1.24 um, when appropriate, along with Azure Stack HCI single node support. Um, we have been thinking about how we want to increase scale. Full disclosure, we find most people run on single node, two node, or four node clusters. Our most common deployment is on a two node cluster. So right now we have the ability to increase scale, but I really, really want people to be asking for it <laughs> before we, go and commit to having 16 node support in all of our test labs running regularly. So if you need larger scale than a eight node cluster, please let me know. Um, that's something that we've been thinking about and talking about, but haven't had a huge amount of demand for. So it'd be really interesting to know if you need large. This is physical clusters. This is not Kubernetes cluster size. So overloaded vocabulary. If you need 16 physical nodes running an on-prem Kubernetes deployment, that would be interesting to hear for us. And then lastly, our provision clusters, which we just spent some time talking about. We are planning on making that preview uh, publicly available for anyone to sign up to use very, very soon. So later this year. Yeah, so in summary, we are working on work alignment. We're publishing a pile of new reference architectures, focusing on low cost hardware, integrating with on-prem infrastructure, and we ship monthly. So uh, our roadmap is very changeable. We very much care about feedback that we're receiving in this early stage of our product's life. So um, yeah, very interested in what folks need and want from the from the product. I don't see any questions in chat. Does anybody have questions for me about any part of this? I'm 
If you have anyone who has an on-prem need, send them my way. Jeff. Hi. Um, would it be possible to, if you have an on-prem and a cloud instance at AKS, can you dynamically migrate workloads across the environment? You know, so right now you can't, but I'm so glad you asked because this has been something that's been driving us all nuts. Um, that is something that we have talked about at length. And the problem we run into is it's hard to know what data caching needs to happen in conjunction with that workload. So when we started kind of playing with uh, kind of demo type experiences, we're like, well, what if you took the bookstore app that we present in all of these different conferences and you could migrate that, that workload? Like, what would that look and feel like? And the problem that we ran into is we couldn't figure out what the right story was around storage caching and migration. So if you have a specific scenario where you're like, I really would like this scope of compute to move, I mean, because we're running Kubernetes and because we do a lot of type version matching and because we do a lot of integration testing, um, there are certainly paths to be able to do that, but we haven't been able to get the details right where we feel confident sharing. So if that's something that you need, I would love to hear more about your scenario please follow up with me or send me an email. That would be really interesting. Does that make sense? It does, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, anyone else or do we? Perfect. Uh, it looks like Darwin actually has a question for you. Uh, need the address of your team. Want to talk about AKS clusters using Akamai as a front switcher. Sounds good. Um, I will send you the link to our community chat for, for specific things. Also, feel free to reach out to me directly. I, I do run our in-market product, so I'm the right person to talk to about um, re reprioritizing roadmaps and what stuff we support. So I'm a good person to start with, and I can get you hooked up with the right folks. Uh, in the meantime, GitHub Projects link is in the presentation. We have our documentation linked as well. The last link is a link to sign up for the private preview for lifecycle management, if that's something you're interested in. I will say one of the funky things, you can do eval if you just want to kick the tires. You can run all of this in an Azure VM, similarly to like the Arc Jumpstart experiences that you've seen. Um, we haven't, we, we are busy updating our actual Jumpstart presence. We have one, but it doesn't have the Azure VM self-hosting experience. So link to the eval guide. Um, feel free to go test things out. I do want to warn people because we do integrate deeply with AAD, you do need to have subscription, high level subscription um, permissions that some people don't have. So this is a really good thing to test out with like MSDN credits or in your own sub subscription. It's pretty hard to test out in an enterprise subscription. Even at Microsoft, we find we have to use our MSDN credits to have a subscription where we have mo more ownership for testing. So yeah, with those caveats, please go try it out and reach out to me if you have questions. I'll send the link, the deck, which has a pile of demos and um, yeah, especially upgrades. Yeah, you, you should go check it out. So I'll send a link to the deck. Thank you so much, Ray. Sarah, thank you so much. Uh, always a pleasure to have you. We had you on with our own internal team, uh, you know, airlift offsite thing, you know, a couple weeks ago. And it was one of the best meetings or presentations we've had. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I look forward to AKS on-prem because a lot of our large enterprise customers are doing this hybrid model and they want a supported AKS uh, or a supported Kubernetes platform to roll on. So I'm really looking forward to uh, how this progresses and what we can offer. So thank you again. All right, um, I'm, uh, I'm going to close it off, give everyone back some time since there's any, any more questions on the chat. Uh, should you have any, again, reach out to us, leave a GitHub issue, ping us on GitHub, Dave on Twitter, throw a rock through his window, whatever. I don't actually suggest that, but you know, if that's the way to get to Dave. Sometimes it is. Uh, please, please do that. Um, I will have the recording up in a few days. I will also package the presentation on our GitHub as well. Um, uh, and I guess that's it for today. Yeah, I'll give everyone back uh, 10 minutes. Um, and Thank you again all for joining. Thank you, sir.